Okay, so here's my first lecture, or the first part of lecture one on, uh, this is, lecture one is introduction to prompt and context engineering for dummies, <laughs> no coders. Um, and uh, as I said in my uh, introduction to this playlist, I do feel a little bit like the man with one eye leading the blind. Um, but I hope that people will find it beneficial to, um, <clears throat> uh, anyway, okay. Let me um, share my screen. Here's the slides. So, first lecture is in four parts. Each part covers one of these learning outcomes. And the first part is um, just basic concepts of prompts and context engineering and why they are very important for um, the environment as well as for your own time and success. Um, <clears throat> and then understand how LLMs learn from uh, the user prompts and um, how they uh, adapt their learning to build up an environment <clears throat> setting a context over time. Um, and then fundamental concepts, um, things like tokens, not uh, cryptographic tokens, but AI tokens, totally different. Context windows, very important. Uh, rate limits, uh, temperature hooks, and these, you know, the terminology, it really matters. Um, and then knowing what is best practice, just summarize it. The uh, parts two and four are pretty short, and most of the uh, meat is in parts one and four. Okay, so one and three. This is part one. Distinguishing between prompt engineering and context engineering, and knowing why they are important. Okay, so you can think of the output or the response from a large language model as being a function of the prompt, that's what you type in just now, and the environment, the context. So the prompt is what you want the model to do, and the context is the environment in which it operates. So if you've never used it before, the, the context is likely just going to be the entire World Wide Web that's accessible. But if you've used it before and you're building up a conversation with it, then the language model will start learning and building up and learning a bit of context and uh, shaping its responses um, to your current prompt in the light of the previous prompts. So context engineering is um, distinct from prompt engineering because you don't just have sort of um, in conversation context engineering, you, this is what I'm going to cover in, in the lecture three of this series, is you can actually build a custom LLM just for you, like a sort of, I don't know, a medical LLM or a lawyer's LLM. Um, actually, I've, bought, I've built um, a couple of teaching, learning LLMs. Um, so prompt engineering is what you say to the LLM crafting individual messages. Um, for example, this user prompt could be summarize this text as if you were an expert, something like that. Okay, it's not a very well specified prompt, but it's uh, uh, engineering the prompt is making that user prompt as efficient as possible. And context engineering is designing an entire system. Um, so, a system prompt would be saying to the configuration engine, because, I mean, I'm not a coder, but I've managed to build some LLMs because I use this no-code approach where I just sort of type in text to the configurator that turns it all into code. So you are a research assistant specialised in the history of the Renaissance, for example, could be one of the system prompts that sets the tone of its replies. So you can think of prompt engineering as giving someone directions for a single journey and context engineering is like setting the preferences for their car's GPS. So 
Prompt engineering is the art of crafting prompts that yield accurate, useful outputs. Optimized prompts that ensure that the responses exactly hit the target and there's no redundant information. They are much more detailed than you might imagine. In fact, in lecture two, we're going to be looking at Anthropic Console that can provide prompts that are pages and pages long. They can specify the format, the role that the assistant is going to adopt, uh, the tone of the replies, whether they're verbose or concise. They can break down tasks into easy, doable chunks. So why is it important? Well, it's not only time consuming for you to have to keep reprompting similar prompts because you're not getting the right, exactly the right thing and throwing away the output. It's also very energy inefficient to just put in any old prompt and ignore most of the output. Everybody's doing this now. Just um, prompting without any particular thought about the energy consumption or the emissions. A 65% increase in annual emissions since 2009 was just announced. So if you look at this article here, Google's AI ambitions push emissions far from net zero target. Google says 51%, but the independent report says that the carbon emissions have risen 65%. I presume they mean year on year. So the emissions in 2019, that year, compared to the emissions in 2024, 20, um, 65% higher in 2024. Yeah. So a poor prompt versus an optimized prompt. A poor prompt, tell me about climate change is going to give a very generic and very lengthy response. It will be what we call token heavy, which matters. We'll explain that in, later on in this lecture, why tokens matter. You are an environmental scientist, write a 200 word summary of climate change causes for a general audience, use bullet points and include at least three specific examples, end with actionable tips. Okay, that's got more tokens in it. Tokens part of a word. Um, but it's going to give you a much more focused, structured, concise, practical and actionable response. And the completion tokens are going to be much less. The response to the poor prompt is going to be searching around the internet for ages and ages. That's going to take a lot of tokens. And then it's going to give you a generic lengthy response. That's a lot of tokens. Whereas uh, this optimized prompt is going to give you something that is much more efficient. So that optimized prompt has a role in assignment, that's environmental scientist. Length specification, 200 words. Audience, general. Format, bullet points. Structure guidance, three specific examples, actionable um, tips, etc. What about context engineering? It is the systematic design and management of the operational environment that shapes how a large language model interprets out inputs and generates outputs. So this is um, the structural elements that influence how the model behaves, not just from an individual prompt. It's a structural element. It will always behave the same way. Whereas in one prompt, you could ask it to do 200 words for a general audience. In the next prompt, you could ask it to do 500 words for a specialist audience, and that's changed the behavior. But the context engineering has sort of hard-coded structural elements that will keep its behavior consistent. But actually, it can operate both at the conversation level and at the system level. In lecture three, I'm going to be looking more at the system level for custom built LLMs. But actually, it applies at the conversation level, what we call session based contexts. I'll explain more what I mean by that on the next slide. 
It includes things like memory management, very important. Um, it can often be a bit of a bottleneck. Um, role definitions, tool integrations, knowledge base restrictions, interaction protocols. Yeah, lots of these things come into context engineering. We'll go into all of those in more detail when we look at context engineering in depth. So you're defining the parameters of the model's responses by using context engineering. Um, it establishes a framework within which prompts operate. Uh, it can be a temporary framework. A general, if you're using a general LLM and you're not actually doing a custom built one, it will always be temporary. That framework will stay in the conversation as long as the history doesn't stay, get so long that it drops out of what we call the context window, and then you've lost it all. But we'll talk about that um, in uh, the third video in this series. If you want to jump to context windows, that's where it is. So the key components for a general LLM is that you've got this one conversation. It's got memory, right? Well, insofar as it has this context window, which it uh, has, uh, it fills up, and then it will, once it's full, it'll forget. Um, and it doesn't really have memory, because what it does is that every time you call the model, it sends all the previous prompts and responses with that current um, prompt. So it's not really memory. Anyway, you should start with something like, you are a data analyst, and for every question, I want you to provide statistical evidence and cite resources, something like that. So that gives the role definition and behavioral guidelines. Um, there are built-in features that can give more persistent context. So if you have a look, there are suggested conversation starters for um, custom-built, um, LLMs, but also for general LLMs. So you know from those that uh, those are the, uh, the, 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 the the context that the um, model has been trained on. It will under, understand terms like analyze or contextualize or summarize or these things. You know that though that's persistent context that you can rely on. Or you could go to Reddit and download a very useful prompt template from one of the forums there. Um, so workflow design is important to um, break up the prompts, uh, manage external context as well. So uh, chain of thought, if you, it knows chain of thought, it's been pre-trained on chain of thought. So if you say use chain of thought, it will automatically break up your um, uh, the prompt that you give it into small, logically connected steps. And um, if you upload a document, tell it to use that, it's going to use that, or you could ask it to use a particular API call. All this can be done with a general LLM. <clears throat> and then you may have um, for your particular organization, uh, rules about context management, style guides, knowledge bases that you have to use, or standardized processes that you must follow. All this can be done just using ChatGPT or Claude 4 as it is. <laughs> or um, you can build your own LLM. Um, so then fundamental behavioral rules that um, are going to persist across all the conversations that that LLM ever has. It may not have any memory from one conversation to another, but it has hard-coded this, this fundamental behavior. Um, for example, you're a financial advisor who always considers risk tolerance and provides evidence-based recommendations. That's a system prompt. I made one with a system prompt um, that uh, uh, you are the Queen of England, Q Q Q QE2. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth II, um, but I found that a little bit uh, uh, lacking in, um, in precision. 
Uh, I also previously tried Shakespeare, but that was very, very verbose and token heavy. And I settled on Jeeves the Butler from, from P.G. Woodhouse. Um, so that were, those were, you know, you can overwrite the system prompts when you're configuring these things. <clears throat> and then you also need to format the response. Uh, for example, you might say, always provide an overview section of 200 words, an analysis of 300 words, a summary of 100 words, and then four bullets of recommendations or something like that. Okay. And every time you use that LLM, it'll always provide responses in that format. And then you can restrict the information sources that can be accessed. Um, I already used the example of a medical um, generative pre-trained transformer to, you know, it, it would only uh, access peer-reviewed literature. Uh, although in some of the uh, news coming out of uh, medical literature about peer review is a bit disconcerting recently. So maybe just um, a particular textbook, for example. And then tool integrations, there are these things called hooks, particularly the API hooks that connect to databases, real-time data, functional services, or even cloud computing resources. Um, an example would be a real-time market data feed. If you're building a, a custom LLM for, for giving advice on trading stocks. Um, so all these things can be done in a custom LLM. And finally, just look at the, um, if you go to ChatGPT and click the GPT tab, you'll see various GPTs. Let's have a look at those now. Let's go to GPT. So these are the ones I just showed you. The number one in lifestyle for a long time has been this astrology one with 8 million conversations. And it gives you the conversation starters. So that sets the tone for what it can answer. Um, and mine are here. I talked about the, uh, the Jeeves one. It's uh, conversation starters are might I trouble you for assistance with a social dilemma? Would you advise me on an appropriate gift? <laughs> Have proper and unflappable value, offering refined, informed and structured assistance. Anyway, we'll have a look at that in a later lecture. Say bye for this one and see you at the next one.